change it. I think that's one of the reasons why Clinton won. You know, Clinton had this, 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 no matter what. I'll tell you, when we first had this conversation about the letters, you were right. And oh. You know, I was just playing it up, and these guys are like, what? It has a boost, you know, I mean, over 25 year old guys. Poor job of organizing, poor job of um, educating, too. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's say uh, hello, everybody, everybody who's uh, who's here so far uh, at the show, everybody who's in the chat, hello, uh, a special shout out to Larry, always to Larry, because Larry's my bud, Larry's my buddy, I just haven't seen him in a while, um, do me a favor and just uh, let me know in the chat that you can actually hear me, what I'm going to try to do is get through a whole show with no technical difficulties, although my mic looks a little hot, my mic looks a little bit loud, uh, my mic is doing that thing again where it just decides to change its level all on its own, all by itself. But it looks it looks good. Okay. So let me know that you can hear me okay. And uh, and off we will go. Hello, David. How are you? Neil, Breeze, Billy, Mowgli. Uh, <laughs> ST told you not to come. What the hell are you doing here, man? Good. Sounds good. Sounds good. Excellent. Sounds good. So listen, why am I here by myself uh, hosting the show? And by the way, um, we have a special guest. He's going to be here in a second. Very excited to have him on. We've had him on before. But why am I here uh, all by myself tonight? Because uh, Dimitri is uh, he's attending dance class tonight. He's attending dance class. As a matter of fact, um, I just got a photo in from um, where he is. Right. Let me go over to this screen right here. Uh, he's attending dance class. And this is a uh, just beautiful uh, beautiful ballerina right here getting here they like oh my god oh my god this that's just that's terrible uh so there you go uh dimitri attending dance class um and it's look it's not really it's not obviously it's not really dance class that he's 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 at uh, like nationals like a dance competition for his daughter lena so of course uh we we wish them the best of luck i hope they they win a lot i hope they take a, all the trophies i take all the trophies home but you know just just so that you know, it's just some, just something to keep on your mind. Something that I want you to leave the show with tonight is uh, is that photo right there. Please, there you go. <laughs> oh God, that's frightening. Um, before we go any further, uh, that coupon code, very good coupon code, still going on. Uh, you'll see it on several of the screens tonight, right here. You see, uh, if I go like that, I can, I'm pointing at, I'm kind of pointing at it. Uh, Twenty percent off the Anakin Cool Fire Z80 Zenith Two Kit. Those coupons are still going on. Uh, there is uh, one going on at Element Vape, both for twenty percent off. One at Element Vape. The coupon code is Z80, and one at my Vapor Store. The coupon code there is going to be Cool Fire. Okay, so that's not bad. I mean, it's already an inexpensive kit, but to get to get another twenty percent off uh, is a pretty cool deal. And I tell you what, I have been loving mine. Uh, I, I, it's the white. The white one, I just, I just think it's. I think this is one of the nicest looking uh, devices that Anakin has produced. Of course, you got uh, up to eighty watts on this one. You have the uh, the Fourier technology, which does the AC signal. So you have standard wattage. Uh, you can adjust in standard wattage. You can adjust in voltage. You can adjust in the F zero mode, which is the the sine wave. You can adjust the frequencies and try different frequencies. And you can do the refresh thing. Of course, it does come with the Zenith two, which we're very proud of because that is a platform product that is going to come with the the point eight tried and true. 0.8 ohm coil and the new 0.3 ohm and we've opened up the airflow a lot to give you uh if you are into restricted direct lung you are going to get that with this tank uh in addition to what i enjoy uh, which would be a very good mtl uh if you guys have questions i'm not sure if bill was able to attend tonight so he might not be able to get the questions into me i'll try to i'll try to watch the chat uh if i miss your question just send it up again okay just send it up again uh, and then let me go over here, and then let me go over here. No, I, I need to go over here. Uh-oh, hold on a second. Wait a second. Okay, I screwed that up, but that's okay. Let me go over here, and then let me go over here and click this button right here, and then let me play this for you.
Hello, as Mooch and Battery Mooch, over the past three years I've tested electronics and over 270 different batteries for the vaping community, sorting out the best performers from the overrated junk. It's been incredibly rewarding and I love doing it. I would like to work for you full time as a community funded tester. This testing station was built to show you my commitment and to let you know that I'm ready to start right now. My Patreon page lets you make fixed monthly contributions so I can quit my day job and make more of the content you want to see. In addition to the battery testing, the videos, the live Q and A's, and, and the messages I answer every day, I'd also be able to start adding 18350 battery testing, lipo testing, uh, mechanical mod voltage drop testing, uh, measuring the effects of uh, metal oxidation and arcing uh, damage on mechanical mods, general safety testing, battery efficiency testing for different mods, and any type of testing the community would like to request. This community support for my part-time testing has been amazing. If you feel my working for you full-time is worth a couple dollars a month, I look forward to becoming a patron. Thank you for watching. I remember that guy. <laughs> hey, Phil. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Phil. Okay. I think it was my microphone that wasn't on just then. So uh, welcome. Welcome back to the show. I think the first show you were on was the Smoker Show. This is the DP Show. Now, good news. Good news. You are not going to get fully DP'd tonight. You're only going to get peed. Which, you teases. You damn teasers. Which doesn't sound that good either. So you're just going to get peed on. But uh, that's so, yeah, tonight you're going to get peed on. <laughs> you know, you guys are always there for every fantasy I have. <laughs> so it's been a while it's been a while since we've talked you know we we talk a, a lot behind the scenes um uh, you know about some some new technology about old technology about some new things that that happened in the industry a new mod that came out that had me scratching my head on a couple of things and I, we're going to get to that in just a little bit but right now how have you been uh, like are, are you out of the covid woods uh, up where you are yet or how, how are things going for you uh, new york's starting to come back um you know, it, it's still a, a fairly high risk city for, for transmission and catching and stuff in terms of someone's classification. Uh, but uh, uh, people are wary, but, you know, maybe half the people are without masks now. The immunization rate is pretty good. Um, so there's, there's some life coming back. I think I think it's fully open legally. And, you know, in terms of what the mayor and uh, the governor had uh you know, closed down and restrictions and stuff like that. So now it's really just a, up to us, you know, not to do the stupid things and, um, you know, be careful and have the restaurants do their thing. And then everyone's just to be, you know, let's just kind of see how things go and yeah. stuff. Uh, for me, it's it's been a, a, a pretty brutal, tough year. I think for a lot of people it has been. And, and uh, we were talking about this before. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's always the second half of the year. We'll see what that turns into. We had some brutal weather hot weather up here but it's a wonderful 64 and rainy today actually i like because it keeps people out of the parks so you can just enjoy 800 acres of central park all to yourself uh on there and then um you know just uh uh looking for work and and doing my testing and uh uh plowing along you know we're, we're we're oddly connected in a really strange way today and here's why because you're you're upstate you're new york you're new york city you're in the city right yeah yeah so okay. downstate Downstate, not upstate. I used to be upstate. Now, okay, so your right, city. Right. Now, I, my parents are here. My parents are here from New Jersey, so they're like almost like your neighbors. Oh, okay, or they're, yeah, they're almost right. like your neighbors, and right they're he, huh? Yeah, pretty much. And they're here telling me that they told me today that it, the weather wasn't too bad here today, and it was like the the, the heat index was like a hundred and four. <laughs> and if they're telling me that, that means that it's been really hot in New Jersey and and humid too. Yeah, we, we had some genuine Florida summer weather here, um, you know, 90s uh, for three, four days with, with, with the high humidity, which is the killer, of course. And, uh, you know, just I'm, I'm in a, an old, you know, 1926 pre-war building with, you know, the 18 inch thick walls and stuff. So you're fine for about two, three days. But once those get all heat soaked and the walls just turn into a heat radiator, yeah, just, oh, yeah, you know, and then it takes three days to cool back down again. Uh, and our, but um, a lot of people spending time, uh, you know, luckily the city's opening up because a lot. Of, this is when a lot of people without air conditioning and stuff like that need the parks. Yeah, and need the playgrounds to to get away from this heat inside. 
for sure. For sure. Yeah. Oh, oh, and my parents also felt very liberated today. They felt because today was the first store, several stores that they walked in, my mother too, that they didn't put a mask on. Yeah. Okay. So they started walking towards the store. They're like, oh, we forgot our masks. I said, you can feel so guilty about that. Right. And I said, look, I said, are you guys vaccinated? They're like, yes, we are. I said, okay. Well, I said, it's a little bit different here than it is, you know, in New Jersey and in New York. I said, as soon as the CDC regulations came out or the, the CDC recommendation came out, I said, all the stores went to masks optional, you know, unless you didn't get the COVID vaccine. Not that anybody's going to admit that. But anyway, so I said, don't worry about your mask. So they and they did. They they didn't put wear their masks. And I think they really kind of felt like, ah, you know, it's like we're starting to get back to normal a little bit, which I think was good for them. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So talk to me about the, talk to me about batteries. <laughs> like how is have you cuz I know you went kind of full time into the industry. Right? I mean you left your well, job? I tried to. You've tried. No, to. no, no. That that was uh, the the thing you played the clip for was an attempt to go full time. Okay. With with the support of the community. And uh, my patrons have been amazing, but it it takes care of about one quarter to one third of my bills. Uh, so I never got enough support from the community to be able to quit my day job and uh, uh, be able to do it full time. So it's still something to do whenever I can in my free time. Uh, 95, 99% of my posts are for my patrons only because they're the ones supporting me. And, and it's hard to just find time to, you know, I answer 150, 200 questions a day now without posting on Instagram and, and doing more YouTube videos and, and Facebook and the emails, et cetera. Uh, so, you know, pretty well every day I'm posting for my patrons and helping them out with their questions. And then any other questions I get, I respond to. But otherwise, um, some daytime job work, which, of course, has been tough with all the COVID slowdowns and stuff. And then a lot of research, which has been kind of nice. Things that I would like to be more involved in, product development, some other things. Uh, it gave me a chance to do research and testing for, and there'll be more about that in yeah. the coming months and years. I won't. Uh, I won't um, say too much about it. But uh, there was actually an attempt at a uh, um, a coordinated attempt between uh, me, a certain battery guy, you, uh, a certain other tech reviewer, Daniel, uh, and a certain uh, uh, Greek. I don't have the the, the photo to come up. But uh, we, we were kind of working on something. It, it got it got sidelined. Who knows? Maybe it'll maybe it'll come back someday. Maybe it'll come back someday. I think that would be an amazing collaboration. Uh, you know, putting those four heads together. Well, at least those three heads. You know, and Dimitri uh, together. I think right. would be fantastic. <laughs> um, but like, uh, do you see like now? Do you see that you you are in demand as much as you were uh, like earlier on in the industry? Yeah, I, I don't think that's faded because I still get that, you know, 150 plus questions a day. Um, I, I think from what I've seen with the demographics for the questions is it's coming more and more from Asia and where the Americas and, and Europe, I think, are becoming a little more aware of what's going on and a little, uh, a little more knowledge now that they've absorbed, be able to do things. They have a wider selection of cells where Asia has some real junk they, they don't have an assortment. So they're very, they, they just can't say, okay, we'll buy, you know, Molly cells or we'll buy Samsung or something. They have to choose, you know, beast batteries or global power or VRK, you know, Enux and things like that. And they're really wondering what the heck these things are. So I think the demand for, for information is still there. Everyone still wants to know what the quote best battery is, um, you know, Europe, Americas or, or Asia. So I think, you know, even though there. even though you post your, your charts and your tables, I think at least once a month, I still say, hey, Mooch, uh, what, what's your what's 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 your right. sauce? <laughs> I, I, like I, I you, you know how like you know, how like Google is your friend, you like and you don't want to bother anybody. But it was still for some reason it was still easier. Uh, what do you think? And we're going to get to that we're gonna get that in does. a little bit. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about a couple other things like where to get cells, what cells to get like a recent experience that I've had. But but the reason why you're here tonight is because of this product right here. Uh, the Obelisk, the Geek Vape Obelisk 120 FC, uh, and and that's uh, that's not just fast charging; it's super fast charging, right? Super fast charging. And when I got that device, I did the review, um, and I was able to see the super fast charge rate. I was able to talk to the super fast charge rate. I was not able to see 
uh, their specified, um, uh, here we go, their specified capacity, uh, which is going to be 3,700 milliamp hours. That's what they're calling it, 3,700 milliamp hour dual cell battery. So, you know, when I start to have questions about batteries, who do I call? I, I call the expert. I call, I call you. And I had talked to you about it. I had talked to you about my experiences with it. I had talked to you about the testers that I was using, everything. And you were like, oh, you know, and it was it's hard to talk apples to apples if you don't have the same equipment that I'm using, right? Right. Well, right. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some general concepts. But yeah. but certainly if, if we start seeing weirdness or something that, you know, if you've got the device and you've got some testers and you're getting stuff that doesn't make sense, then it can be very difficult if we have different equipment or certainly if we're not both testing the same device. Right. So what I did was I said, hey, you know what? I'm just going to buy you the same testers that I used and just send them to you. <laughs> so that's what I did. It was, it was the easiest way to do it. Not to mention uh, that I sent you the device itself. So I, I, got, I wound up getting two of them from GeekVape. The companies usually give me at least two, uh, one to do the review on and one to do uh, a giveaway. And I did give it away. Uh, but the other one went to you, right? And I, well, I believe I mean you have it there now. Yeah, I mean, you you can give this away. Oh shit! All right. Well, I guess I'm not going to get that back in in one piece. <laughs> you know, and and I even still have the battery, so we can give this away too, <laughs> as a bonus. You know, I I think I forgot to send you uh, the 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 form that says I will get it back in one piece. So so since I didn't send you, you might, that form, yeah, I guess it's okay. Have. What what happened to it? So um, I guess we'll just do this. We'll make it easy. Uh, I'll, and I'll say 3,700 milliamp hours. True or false? complete bullshit <laughs> it's and and the, it's frustrating because in a way it's totally true but technically it's completely false um the 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 problem is and for i, I would love to see the companies realize that, that they can be technically correct without losing the big marketing numbers they like to use and Right now, the, the thing is, and I don't know if you were going to put something up on the screen or if I should stop talking or keep going. No, you can keep talking, and I, and I'll, I will put. Uh, you want to put some of your photos up on? Um, I, no, I would just say that the website stuff, the first two. Um, oh yeah, the it, web the website has actually been up, so I'm actually showing the uh, the ultra long life battery right now, oh, the okay. 3700 milliamp hour claim. Oh okay, so yeah, what they. Essentially, what they did is they called it a 3,700 milliamp hour battery, and on the wrap it says 3,700. I'm going to say ma from now on for milliamp per hour, so I don't go insane. Uh, it's two 1850 ma cells in series. Now I don't know through not knowing or not caring because 3,700 is a bigger number. Geek Vape has decided to say, well, two of those in series means 3,700, but it doesn't. Batteries in series are the same. A hundred. 1850 mAh batteries in series is an 1850 mAh battery pack, but it's at a higher voltage. So right there, they're wrong. It's an 1850 mAh battery pack, and that is the capacity of the battery in that device. But and this is where it starts getting complicated. Because you've got two 1850 cells uh, in series, the runtime is the equivalent of one, a single 3,700 milliamp per hour battery. That's where they can start playing around with, well, you know, everyone knows we just mean, you know, it's like, you know, how long it runs or it's the energy or something like that. But I, I, I if this pisses me off because it confuses the hell out of people because I get a bunch of questions from people going, wait a minute, Mooch, what about this? And what about that? I don't understand. I would like to see some, a company like B. Geekvake going, yes, we have two 1850 ma cells in series, gives you an equivalent ma of 3700, namely runtime, similar to a 3700 milliamp per hour single cell. They get to use their big numbers and get their sales and have the marking people, you know, not go apoplectic. And also they're technically correct and not making it confusing and hard for people who are trying to understand this battery stuff, but get this marketing crap getting in the way of things. So, you know, and the wrap itself for this, you know, they're two pouch cells um, in series. The wrap says 3,700. So I don't know if, yeah, there we go. That blue one is, it's, so I don't know if they are, if they were lied to 
by the people they hired, you know, to, to sell them these, you know, to make the packs for them, or if he, they've said, hey, could you put 3,700 3, on here because that's a nice big number. Uh, hmm. But it's technically wrong. It's an 1850 milliamp hour battery pack. Uh, so right there, right from the start, I was just like, oh, come on. And even worse, when I ran, well, I ran the capacity tests on them. They're about 2,000 ma, but that's down to 2.5 volts. So it actually, it actually is an 1850 ma battery probably down at their cutoff at like 3.2 volts, which is fantastic. That means these things are actually accurately rated for the application they're being used for. It's not some kind of stretching down to two volts or something preposterous like another company might do. But then they screw it all up with this capacity thing. And yeah. it's just frustrating because it didn't have to be that way. Yeah. You know, that actually reminds me. It reminds me of there was another dual uh, battery device. I think it was a, a DNA product, an Evolve product, or, or at least something that used an Evolve board. And um, that was my argument that they could have, they could have, avoided a lot of stuff if they simply used the word equivalent in there somewhere. And they didn't. They just say it's it's a 3,700 milliamp hour battery. Um, right. So, so it, it, it doesn't hurt the marketing to say equivalent ma and have a little asterisk there or say 3,700 ma asterisk and then at the bottom, you know, equivalent capacity or whatever. It's one sentence and they still get to use the big numbers. Yeah. Rant over. Rant so, over. Oh, come on. I know you want to rant some more. Um now, would you would you say that it, it, it is truly a thirty seven hundred milliamp hour equivalent battery, or is it a little bit lower than that? Because my my uh, test came out really low, both of them with both testers. But you said you had better luck with the testers I sent you. I probably sent you a good one, and I have shitty ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, I for the capacity testing I do on these, I use the you know the the sixteen hundred dollar tester. Uh, but the testing I did of your devices separately, just to check them against my reference unit showed them to be accurate to better than one percent one of them was like 0.3 percent off the other one was uh at worst one uh, percent off so at least the testers i got that were a copy of your testers um were, were dead on i i think the weirdness you were having was either in the pc software and how it may have interpreted data, or something's wrong with the particular testers you have. Okay, so your testers actually showed somewhere around 3,700 milliamp hours? Uh, no, no, that would be the equivalent capacity. Uh, each one of these tested out um, at around 1850 ma each, down to the cutoff around 3.2 volts. Okay, so that's how you tested them. Now, uh, these actually are 2,000 milliamp hour cells down to 2.5 volts. But since they're, they could be lipos, or, or I don't know, it, it's a pouch cell. I don't know if it's lipochemistry, which would be three volts or so. So I t so, but down to three point two volts. Yeah, that eighteen fifty is accurate. Okay, okay. You know, you know what we, what we should do. Um, since I sent you those two tests, or like the, they were somewhere anywhere between fifty and one hundred dollars, and I sent you those two. What you should do is you should buy me your sixteen hundred dollar tester. Send me that. This way, I can verify your numbers. Now, I think that's that, a good I mean, idea. That's fair. And, uh, that's and, fair. And, well, no, that's not fair because <laughs> you sent me two testers. Yeah. So I should be buying you two. Yeah, the but they were two different ones. Units. I mean, if you have two sixteen hundred dollar testers that are different, then yeah, I would agree that you would have to send me both of those. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we'll work something out. I think. Well, I, you know, since it's sixteen hundred, let's. I'll, I'll come up with something nice for thirty two hundred dollars and surprise you. <laughs> so, uh, fair like, fair, all right. Fair. So, so that's it. I mean, you know, I, it sounds like the it the it sounds like it's legitimately thirty seven hundred milliamp hours, but they really need to just 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 market it the correct way use the correct terms right it's not a like a, it's not a real 3700 milliamp it's 3700 milliamp it's 37 equivalent right it's equivalent yeah it the, runs as long as a single 3700 milliamp per battery you know if you had you know a molly cell p42a you know 4000 4200 ma or so and this it would probably you know it's going to run about as long as a molly cell p42a or samsung 40t you know something up in that up in that range in terms of uh, vaping time and stuff like that. Okay, so now now comes the next question. I think the next question is uh, is going to we're going to talk about this right here. Um, ultra fast charging on these batteries, <laughs> uh, and I what's that? <laughs> yeah, okay, and you know what? I not only have this question about this device, but I mean I have the same question about my phone, which is it has ultra fast charging too. I mean this thing charges. If I plug it into that block in an emergency, and that's the only time I use it, 
right, is when I really need to get a fast charge. Um, is it good for the battery? Does it reduce the life of the battery? What does that ultra fast charging do to the overall lifespan of the battery? It screws it over. It stomps it into the ground. Um, one of the, one of the best ways to shorten the life of a battery is fast charge it. Uh, it it not only accelerates the aging of the battery, but it it's also one of the uh, leading causes of um, a type of buildup inside the battery that can eventually lead to an internal short circuit or failure of the battery. Now that involves a lot of abuse, but charging is where you're adding energy to the cell and anything you're adding energy to becomes more active. So little faults can get magnified. It's at a higher temperature. There's more energy being added. It's not the time to start fooling around. And it also just plain old ages the cell quicker. The faster you charge, the faster you're aging that cell and the shorter the overall life of that cell is going to be, especially if it raises the temperature on top of things. Okay. So I, I, I guess you, you recommend against it. I mean, you recommend like doing it when you have to, I guess, when you're, when you're in that situation, well, but that's it. it. Each of us can choose, you know, sometimes, you know, let's say you've got ultra fast charging available to you. Well, okay. I'm not going to say you can't do that. Of course you can. If you got 15 minutes before you leave the house and you realize, you know, whoa, I need to get some charge into this phone, hook it up to the fastest charging method you got that is, is approved by the manufacturer, please. And, you know, give it that 15 minute super boost because it's not something you're doing every day. Right. But if you're heading to bed each night and hooking it up into an ultra fast charger, when you've got hours, you could be charging slow, but deciding to do it in an hour or even 15 minutes like this obelisk, that's, in my mind, an unnecessary abuse of the battery, shortening the time. So for me, it's convenience. You say, hey, Battery life is a preference until I really need the convenience of short charging. But all the rest of the time, I'm going to go for overall battery life because, you know, I've got an hour, I've got seven hours, whatever it might take right. on there. And, you know, the slower, the better. And you can decide when you're going to go fast and when you're going to go slow. Okay. Down to a certain point, yeah. charging at a hundredth of an amp is ridiculous. You know, who it doesn't save your battery anymore to take a month to charge your battery. But, <laughs> you know, something like, you know, for an average 18650 21700 once you're getting below half an amp or something like that it's just not making any difference even 1 amp right okay okay now i talked to i remember talking to zen about this uh, I, you know mike morgan um yeah. and he knew something about batteries too and i remember him telling me that you know if 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 the time allows just charge it at a at a lower rate he said it's better for the battery and he also said and i don't know how true this is he said it more it, it more densely packs the battery uh is there is there truth to that <sighs> in the short term yes um when you're trying to cram the ions you're moving the the ions move from one side of the bat, battery to the other. The, the ions go back and forth, charge, discharge, charge, discharge. If you try to slam them into one side of the battery very, very quickly, they actually pile up. It's sort of the the outside of let of the negative part of the battery when you when you're charging up. So there's a difference in how many ions are here and how many are inside. And they have to literally diffuse inside and find all the nooks and crannies. But if as soon as you stop charging, or if you just leave it alone, they eventually all find a home. Uh, but that is just a, a temporary thing that affects the voltage of the battery. Um, it it all works itself out over time. Uh, the, the concern can be if you're charging fast enough, and I mean fast, then that pile up of lithium ions at the negative side of the battery, they can start actually deciding not to go into the negative part of battery, but to just settle plate, metal plate onto internal parts of the battery. Now you start growing lithium metal, what they call dendrites, little branches of lithium starting to grow out and those don't go away. And so a little bit of overcharging again and again and again, too fast charging can lead to these metal structures growing out and eventually can find a metal structure maybe from the other side or pierce through the center of the battery and touch the other side of the battery and you get an internal short circuit. And so 
So in a way, he's right, um, but really, it's it's a temporary thing, and it gets bogged down in the technical details. But uh, what was the question? <laughs> Uh, charging at a lower rate, right? More densely packs the battery. Oh, uh, for that? No, no. Uh, you, you're going to eventually get everything packed in there. Okay. It just, it makes it, uh, think of it as um, if you've got, um, you know, if you're trying to get a fire hose worth of water to go through a sponge or something idiotic scenario but you've got a sponge and you're aiming a fire hose at it and you want to get water to pass through it well the water is going to build up on one side of the sponge but you know eventually all that water is going to eventually drift through the sponge where if you just drip water onto the sponge it's going to just drip out at the same rate both scenarios result in all the water making it through the sponge got it. one of them will be nice and continuous and not shatter the sponge into a million pieces got it and the other one results in a bunch of water building up on one side of the sponge or a filter or something and eventually working its way through later. Makes but, sense. Um, I, I actually, there can be, a, I'm sorry, he, technically he is correct. Uh, there can be an inefficiency at very high charging rates, but it, it's, it, it's technical. It's a little technical details. In the end, the ions pretty well make okay. it through. Okay. Now, what about the uh, what about the onboard charger itself? I mean, did it did it look good to you? Did it um, did it perform well? Did, uh, what about heat buildup? How, how did how did the charger itself look to you? That I'm fairly happy with. Uh, charger temperatures were manageable. the The cell itself only got up to about 40 Celsius, which is fine. Um, anything under 45 Celsius to sell, which I call warm. I think most people will call warm. Uh, it really isn't accelerating the age of the batteries so much. So even with the rapid charging, um, there was enough heat transfer coming out and, and a small enough amount of heat. And let's see, uh, it's the one, not those, it's that one. Yeah. Um, so I've got the, uh, the thermocouple, the temperature sensor and that brown wire jammed down in between the two cells. And, and they had said that they were only at a certain temperature and I was measuring around that temperature. That's good. So at least temperature wise, the cells not being very badly abused. Uh, it's not getting up to uh, a high temperature. The circuit board itself wasn't getting high. I didn't do uh, a, a lot of looking at the charger circuit or particular components, stress or stuff like that. But it, it, that part, the overheating, I wasn't worried about. Okay. Um, the the sheer charge rate itself and you could bring up the thing with the uh, yellow meter and where it says uh 6.9 uh on there uh yeah that one now up in the top part of that you know the somebody you know if you read some of the literature i i think some of, you know or people might say oh you know 3.25 amps you know on that uh, charger block okay you know charging at three amps that's okay well the problem is and if you, the where the top red arrow is, yeah, it's, and at least the charge of block that I'd gotten inside the, um, in the, in the obelisk kit, uh, I got a little over three amps, but it's three amps at 20 volts. We don't charge at 20 volts. We're going to be charging at 8.4 volts. Well, when you convert 24 volt, 20 volts down to eight volts, we're low in the voltage, the power, Namely, this is a 60 watt, 65 watt charger. The power is going to still stay the same. If you lower the voltage down, the current's going to go up. So if we go back to that other one that shows that 6.9, you see that red arrow at the bottom, 6.9, that's seven amps of current going into the battery itself. So three and a quarter amps, three amps or so going into the USB port at 20 volts gets converted to over seven amps, around seven amps at the 8.4 volts for charging the battery. Hmm. That's fast. That's how you can charge this pack, 1850 mile pack, in 15 minutes because they're yeah. charging at seven amps. Yeah. Now, I don't know if that is an imminent problem. It's not in terms of temperature, but I, you know, if I, it takes about a month to do running 24 hours a day to do cycle life testing, namely you charge, just charge, charge, just charge, and sure. I would do it at seven amps. So I can't answer if that affects cycle life. But I know it's not helping the cycle life of that battery to be charged at seven amps. So I put it, I grabbed a, a little Apple two amp charging block and put that on. And there was another picture with uh, that one. It was the next picture uh, after that 6.9 amp one and said, okay, you know, what if someone decides, you know, what can we do? 
And so I put a two amp charging block on there at five volts and that results in 0.6 amps going into the batteries. So there's a way we can say, hey, by not putting in this USB-C PD or power delivery charging block that comes with 65 watts of charging power going into it, if we use just a standard, you know, uh, uh, two amp charging block, sure. now we can get, it ended up delivering 1.3 amps or so into it, and that ended up being around 0.6 amps. There's a way to avoid the fast charging. Just use any USB 5 volt uh, adapter that you know can handle a quality one. Please, let's not use two dollar China ones. Let's use the Samsung Anchor, Aki, uh, Apple, uh, two amp block, and we can charge at 0.6 right. amps into the battery itself. It would almost be nice if the device or the the charging block that they gave with the device came with the, 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 the ability to switch between like ultra fast charging and just normal two amp charging or one amp charging. Or, or our menu setting even, you know, less convenient, but you know, a, a menu setting and to say, hey, you know, let's uh, convert this, you know, cause you can communicate with the charging block and go, whoa, don't give me 20 volts, give me five volts. Yeah. And then boom, now you're, now you're limited in how much current, how much power you can deliver. Uh, and that would result in less current going into the cell. So I would love to see them do that. Technically, it's certainly something you can do. There is a negotiation between the device and these USB, these high power USB-C PD, power delivery charging blocks, uh, a AC adapters, where you negotiate what yeah. the capabilities are and what you want. So you can force that block to go five volts only and have that option, but that costs money. Right. And and uh, uh, so they, they, I guess, Either that they hadn't thought about it or thought it wasn't wanted, yeah. um, or it was just too expensive uh, for the budget. That's actually a question that I got. And uh, to Raw Chuck, I got your question. I'm trying to. Okay, so a couple PSA announcements. Uh, first of all, we have a hard stop tonight at 10 o'clock. I got to stop the show at 10 o'clock because I have a conference call after this. Uh, that's number one. Number two, please don't forget 20% uh, off uh, the Inikin Cool Fire Z80 Zenith 2 kit that Dimitri and I are both very, very proud of. Uh, you can get 20% off of that kit price over at Element Vape if you use the coupon code Z80. And my Vapor store, their coupon code is Coolfire. So the kit is already priced really, really well. You can get an additional price, uh, an additional 20% off if you order from those two sites. Again, uh, I've got a 10 o'clock uh, hard uh, shutoff for the show tonight. And... Uh, I'm gathering questions. Uh, unfortunately, Bill Tarling is not watching the show. He usually uh, watches the show, monitors the questions, and sends us text messages so that we don't miss the questions. Uh, so I'm go I'm trying to watch and listen and, and run everything at the same time. Uh, but if you have a question, uh, when we get to the questions, and we'll start that like really soon, uh, please just keep asking it. Okay, just keep or. Uh, leave your question with like a hundred dollar super chat, and I'll, I'll definitely, I'll definitely read it too. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah, yeah you would. Um, I know. It, you know. Another reason why we're ending the show tonight at ten p.m. is so that Larry can watch the entire show. Because Mooch, just to let you know, Larry's very old, right? So he does. He got. He got to go to bed very early. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, so Raw Chuck, we'll we'll ask the question now. Raw Chuck uh, asked, uh, "What do you recommend for an eight bay uh, charger or, or a four bay? Four bay. What do you recommend for a four bay?" I have no charger recommendations. Isn't that, why is that? Uh, because um, you don't because you don't want to you don't want anything to go bad and you be associated with the the recommendation. Is that it? Well, no. It, it's really the the checks I get for being a shill. Oh, really? Phil, Phil, let me tell you, there's a revenue stream you're completely missing out on. Refusing to test things. It's, there's good money in that. Ah, okay. I see what you're saying. I see. So what? basically, nobody has sent you their four bay charger to officially put it through the ringer and test it and paid you to do so. So then, no, no why, one wants why to should be you recommend a charger, right? Nobody wants to be busted for the bullshit ratings and cheap components and stuff. So they send me checks not to test, and I'm rolling in the dough. And I've got this green screen background of my apartment, but I'm in a chateau in the south of France right now. <laughs> Okay, since we're running out of time in 20 minutes, um, if not sooner. Uh, the thing is, I've t I tested like 13, 14 charges and stuff. What I wanted to charge here is utterly and completely different from everybody else wants. Um, there's so many different ones and there's so many different preferences and priorities for people. There is There cannot possibly be a best charger. There won't even be a best top five. It, it's a monster 
I, I came to realize it's a monster full-time field for me to get into for testing and trying to figure out what might be a decent charger. They're all spectacularly inaccurate in terms of capacity testing. Internal resistance testing is useless on these chargers. Capacity testing is usually 10 to 15% off. Uh, they're all good for basic charging and stuff like that. Um, I, I just... It, I just realized I don't have any more time to start a whole new field of testing and the literally hundreds of questions that I would get, thousands of questions actually, maybe another hundred a day, if in addition to sales and some other things, also I became a source for a lot of charge advice. So I just couldn't get any further into it. I have my test results at ECF for the 13 charges I tested, but I just don't have any recommendations because it's so, I use power supplies for charging. I don't even use right the charges to be, right. to be you know, I, I mean i've seen some of the like the, the real heavy duty uh charges especially like in the uh the rc world right i mean they're they're using some like really high-end crazy ass chargers how about used, this actually, how about this how I about lied. i tell you i used lipo charges those 325 dollars lipo charges yeah. i used them for cycling yeah the, the batteries right how about i do this how about i tell you what charger i'm using and i've used for years now that i i really really like because of its features and the things that it can do and you tell me if it's good or it's bad if it's bad i'll, I'll lose a little bit of sleep over but not a lot but not a lot okay okay so what i've been using uh for a long time is the uh the x-tar dragon Hold on, is that VC VC plus VP four plus? Yeah, hold on. I'll do I'll do like this. I think if I go like that, yeah, look at that right there. That is the yeah. That, that's that's be one hell. of the look how dusty that it, is. That and the Opus BTC thirty four hundred would would be one of the two or three I'd say take a look at because you can configure it because it was reasonably you know accurate. The Dragon or, or uh, the Opus. Um, but because it does have a lot of configurations, a lot of different things you can do with it, it's a terrible, terrible choice for someone who just wants to frack and drop the battery in and get it charged. Sure. They don't, you know, so that's why I, I don't recommend things because now I have to have all these explanations to who it's good for, who it's not good for, and almost nobody wants to hear that. They just want the best charger, man, just tell me what to buy. And, and I can't because it, it's, it's like asking what's the best battery. Period. Right. Well, you know, you got to know what size battery you want. Right. I, you know, <laughs> um, hey, at least like when that. I, we're going to talk about battery recommendations. And at least when I come that to I you. That I can give you. Yeah. At least when I come to you with battery recommendations, I, there is like, you know, I, I say, well, okay, what what's your battery recommendation for capacity versus what's your battery recommendation for power output, right? Um, one of the things I like about this one is that, that it does do the refresh. It'll, it'll drain a battery. Um, it, it actually... This has worked really, really well for me, and it has never once lit itself on fire. So that's a good thing. I think that's, that's, that's always a good thing. Always Under, a good thing. Underappreciated, underappreciated feature. <laughs> Lack of flammability. <laughs> so something else we were talking about uh, before. On my website, uh, I had a, a list, uh, a listing or a link anyway to RTD Vapor. Uh, if anybody knows me, they followed me through the years, they they followed reviews that I've done, they followed tasteyourjuice.com, uh, I have always been a fan of RTD Vapor. I've known them for a long time. I know that they carried authentic cells, right? Uh, and that is the company that I recommended when anybody came to me and was looking for a battery. Well, uh, somebody sends me an email the other day and they're like, hey, Phil, we went to tasteyourjuice.com, we, we clicked on RTD Vapor and it went nowhere. So then I clicked on RTD Vapor and it went nowhere. RTD Vapor is gone. I, you know, I, I hate what's going on in the vaping industry. I, I, I hate to see like some really good companies, some really good friends, uh, you know, exiting. And it looks like RTD Vapor has exited the uh, the building. Um, who do you recommend now? Like, what would be your list if you needed to go and buy some authentic cells uh, for vaping? I'd say um, eighteen six fifty battery store, um, lithium ion wholesale. IMR batteries, uh, Illum, I L L U M N, uh, uh, Vaporize down in, um, uh, if you're down in Australia, uh, Encon, Accutel, uh, Fogstar in the UK. Uh, there are a few of them out there. Uh, I've got a list of my Facebook page. The pin post on my Facebook page has a list of vendors. I think RTV Vapor is still on it. I'm going to take them off. And, um, uh, 
I just posted today the list of uh, uh, distributors, authorized uh, distributors and vendors for Molly Cells. So uh, they can check Facebook page or Instagram uh, for that. But I, those I think would be, I, I regularly buy from, because the service is so quick, um, 18650 battery store, lithium ion wholesale, occasionally IMR batteries, uh, and then other sites, because I'm in the States. But if in Europe, you've got Encon and, and Fogstar, Accutail, um, uh, Vaporize down in Australia. Asia, I don't have any recommendations. I don't know anybody uh, there, sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna at least give you a little teeny tiny piece of homework. Uh, if you can, just send me the link to your list. Uh, this way I can get it and I can post it with the uh, the replay of this show. You don't have to do it right now. Don't don't really. No, 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 no okay. just write it, just reminding me because I am old and frail and I will forget. Uh, ditto, my friend. That's why I have this little pad right here next to me along with this little pen right here so that I can you know yeah. keep track of I everything. I need to own stock in, in post-its. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, uh, anybody who's watching the show, I know he just ripped off a lot of different companies or not ripped off, ripped, yeah, like ripped off. Like he, he flowed, he said a lot of different companies. Uh, so what I'll do is the, I'll, I'll get a list anyway. and I'll make sure that the list is in the replay of this on tasteyourjuice.com. Um, another thing we just thought, by the way, uh, 18650batterystore.com. I have recently just as of today started working with that company and you're going to see a couple banners uh on tasterjuice.com for that company and here's why um i have always been a fan of the sony the vtc batteries right uh typically i'm i've always used either the, the sony batteries or the lg batteries i have known jonathan tang for a long time um we've hung he's a great guy i've met him and talked to him at a lot of shows and he is behind the molly cell battery and you you, you know that and uh, because RTD Vapor went away, um, and because that's where I got all my Sony cells and my Panasonic cells and my LG cells, I said, you know what, let, let me let me think about this Molly cell battery. And the reason why I want to think about this Molly, Molly cell battery is because whereas Sony, LG, and Panasonic, they say, no, you cannot use our batteries in your vaping devices. No, fuck you. No, you can't take, take them out, right? But Molly cell says, yes, you can, and actually markets to... The, the vaping industry, which is the, as far as I know, well, not, not the only, there are a few others, right? But so my question to you was, okay, so how are Molly cells? And your answer was? They have the top two best all around cells available to, to the vapor e-bike, you know, personal electric vehicle flashlight communities. And uh, the Molly cell P26A is my best all around 18650. The Molly Cell P42A is my best all around, best my choice for best all around 21700. They're good cells. We, it, it, this is a, a really nice win win situation because typically it's something, you know, when a bunch of cells or something is being pulled off the market or we're being blocked from buying something like Samsung, LG, Sony's, Panasonic's, et cetera, then you're stuck with some disasters, maybe some low grade crap from China or something we've got to you know, we're forced to use, but we've got these terrific cells available to us and from a company that isn't worried about individual cells being used. And it's not just vapors, it's, it's flashlight users and um, uh, electric skateboard and things like that. People who are buying essentially loose cells or individual cells, Molly Cell embraces those communities. Actually it's E1 Molly and they, their brand name for their cells are Molly Cells. And it's fantastic that we have great cells and it, you know, we fully supported <laughs> by the company who's making them and we don't have to do all this on the down low and, and try to get them in all the, on all the secondary and gray markets that we get Samsung, LG's, Sony's, all those that come as excess inventory, old, who knows how they're stored, low grade crap. Th that is what the market is, or the situation we're in where all these big name sales, it's a nightmare disaster. But with Molly sales, we don't have to deal with that. Yeah, and I actually have, uh, this is the first time I have, believe it or not, the first time I'm, that I'm going to the 18650 Battery Store website, and here it is right here. Uh, you can see Molly Cell is listed right here. If I click Molly Cell, I don't know where I'm going to go. I guess I'm going to go to the Molly Cell Batteries, and there they are. Um, and I was talking to these guys. They were telling me today that they have a couple of the batteries that I want in stock. Uh, they had the 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 Molly Cell. I, I don't know the model numbers yet. 
Uh, I'm not there yet. I don't know like VTC 5, 5, like, I, I knew the Sony. I don't know the Molly cell numbers, uh, but they're sending me the, the Molly cell that is like for capacity, the 18650 for capacity versus the Molly cell for power, right? Because typically when I test the product, I'm testing it with a power battery. When I use a product, because God knows 15 watts, it's like the highest I go is 15 watts. I don't you need maniac. I don't need a power battery. I need a capacity battery, right? Um, so when I test products, I use a, a power battery. When, when I'm vaping myself personally, I use a, a capacity battery. So they are sending me some stuff, um, and, and I am going to give them a plug. I'm going to give Molly Cell a plug. Uh, you'll see some uh, some stuff on Taste Your Juice for them. Uh, they will be a liquid. Uh, they will be listed uh, in your recommendation, and uh, and you'll see them in the reviews, guys. If I if I'm doing reviews on uh, external battery devices, you'll see Molly Cell uh, from this point on. So, but but I do like the fact that. Um, they, they market to the vaping industry. So they, they embrace, it's nice, it's nice to be, be a part of a company that embraces the industry rather than says, go fuck yourselves. Right. I, I, I think so anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's handy. And it, it gives us the opportunity to get, you know, good sales that, that were made recently as, as opposed to, you know, uh, grade B stuff in, you know, 2016 or something that we might get otherwise. Mm -hmm. Well, and I noticed as I'm talking here, Larry keeps saying, he's Larry's like, Phil, you know, I use the Molly cells. I've always used the Molly cells. I've used the Molly cells for you. This is Larry, right? But like, I don't fucking trust anything Larry says. So, you know, it's, like, Larry, I'm the kind of person that's got to do the research myself. I got to get slapped in the face with it. I don't believe anything. Unless, unless Mooch says it, then I'll, then I'll buy it. I'll believe it then. Um, so Molly cell, good cell. That's good to know. Um, well, oh, so excuse. is that, would that be your recommendation for the best? Like if you were to recommend any 18650, would be, that be your recommendation at this point? For... Uh-oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Is oh, that your, yeah, is that yeah. your internet or mine? Yeah, but as we know, means. All right, Mooch, I don't know if you can hear me, uh, but you're breaking up. Can I was every... losing you before. You went through. Okay, so I don't know if that's my internet or if that's your internet. Can everybody? Yeah, uh, if you, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you, but you're frozen I and you're a little bit. You're a little bit digitally, uh, digitally stuttered. Uh, can you guys let me know? Are you back now? No. Uh oh. Can you guys let me know if you can hear me? Okay. Is my is 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 this my internet issue or is this Mooch's internet issue? Can somebody let me know? Uh, I don't jump, um, but uh, okay. So me. the the internet and Mooch is yeah. Mooch is typing that he can hear me. So the the internet sounds like thank God, thank God it's not my internet that's having the problem because I don't want to get back on the golf cart and drive down the street and yell at some poor guy up in the lines. I don't want to do that again. I mean, it took it took my voice literally a full week to uh, to to heal from yelling at the guy up in the lines, taking my internet down. Um, so I, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll go here as for as long as we can, but we got to end this show anyway. Yeah. It, it's Mooch. Mooch. It sounds like Mooch went bye-bye. Mooch's internet went bye-bye. It's all those people in New York city using that internet, man. It's too many people. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to run outside and yell. It's yeah. not mine. It's not mine this time. We're, we're trying to hear you Mooch, but, uh, you're not coming through buddy. Um, so I will, uh, I will do, oh, no, I don't want to show that, but I do want to show this again. Let's see if I can show this again. Where is it? Right here. Uh, I'll go ahead. And zoom. For those of you uh, who didn't see this yet, uh, because you didn't join the show uh, soon enough, um, Dimitri is at a, uh, oh, hold on. Wait, let me do this. No, I want to do this. I want to do, I want to do that. That's, that's the button I wanted to push right there. Uh, Dimitri is, uh, he's attending dance class. So he, that's why he's not part of the show. Uh, he is, I say he's attending dance class. Not really. Uh, he's taking his daughter, uh, Lena to like the national, a national dance competition, a national Here dance. We go. Oh, oh, I hear you. I hear you. And I, I'm just, I just want to show everybody this photo. Uh, if those, uh, for those people who didn't see uh, this photo before. Uh, this is a photo from uh, the dance competition here. Uh, look at this beautiful form, uh, this stunning, stunning woman. And uh, it just it all goes downhill from there. It all it all goes downhill from there. Like, you know, it, 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 it's it's fine. Everything's good. And then all of a sudden we get here and it's just not good. It's just not good anymore. Right. But there there is a photo uh, from the dance competition right now happening right now. Uh, oh, oh, that doesn't look good. Me. 
that that doesn't look good. <laughs> oh man, what happened? All right, you know what? I think I know you're still trying, buddy. I know you're still trying. Um, Zoom Zoom still looks good, but uh, I think you have gone bye bye. It, yeah, it's telling me that your network bandwidth is low right now. So, what do we do? I got to end it anyway because I got to go to the... I know. I know, everybody. Um, Good. Now, every now and then I hear a word that you say, and that's about it. Okay. So, it's okay. Don't, so don't worry. Okay. Don't sweat I, it. Don't sweat it. It's usually me. I'm just happy that it's not me tonight. It's okay. I, he's, he's apologizing to everybody in the chat. Um, don't really, really don't sweat it. I just appreciate the fact that, that you came on the show. Um, and I had to wrap it up now anyway, but here's what I'm going to do. Cause I did have some more questions for you, uh, Mr. Mooch, John. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll just have you back on the show. I'll have you back on the show. I'll ask the rest of the questions because one of the questions that the questions that I wanted to answer was, um, or I wanted to ask was what's, what, what's the worst cell you ever tested? Because you used to really, I, I used to love your writings, uh, whether you, because you used to post on tasteyourjuice.com uh, or you know all the other places that you posted, and I used to love when you ranted on a cell. So I wanted you, I wanted you to rant on some cells. I wanted you to rant on another photo. Uh, am I going to be able to pull this photo up quick? Let's see. Can I do that? If I go here, and I go here, and I go here, I wanted him to uh, to rant a little bit on this photo right here, and we didn't get an opportunity for him to rant. Um, so we will, but uh, everybody, we will bring uh, Mooch back, but uh, let me do this before we wrap this up. Please don't forget everybody that there are two fabulous coupon codes, codes going on right now for the, uh, the beautiful, look at this, look at, oh, I'll go here, I'll do it here. Look how pretty that is. I mean, that, that's really good looking, huh? Really, really good looking. The cool fire Z80, um, 80 watts of power. You can adjust this in power. You can adjust this in voltage. You can put this in the F0 mode with the Fourier technology and get that uh, that AC signal to give that coil a little shake. Maybe keep some particulates off of that coil. Make your coil last a, bit, a little bit longer. And you have the refresh function here as well. And don't forget the kit with the kit. You are going to get the uh, the all new Zenith 2. Uh, me and Dimitri were really proud of this. This is going to be a platform product. You're going to be able to get this as part of the Z80 kit, uh, also as a standalone tank. But if you are interested in the kit right now and you want to save some money, you can use the two coupon codes, 20% off of the Inakin Cool Fire Z80 Zenith 2 kit uh, over at Element Vape. Element Vape has it 20% uh, off if you use the coupon code Z80. Uh, they're on the screen right now. And of course, My Vapor Store. My Vapor Store, uh, you use the coupon code over there, Cool Fire. That will both get you... Uh, the twenty percent off, and and when you get this, right, you know what you could put in it. If you go to Dash Vapes, you can put uh, some watermelon peach in there because this is the number one best selling flavor in the unsalted line. And I think that's uh, that's all we're going to be able to talk about tonight. Um, uh, if you guys have any last minute questions, uh, I really can't answer them. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, look, Mooch, really don't sweat it, bud. I'm telling you, it happens. It it just happened to me right in the middle of a global. Uh, product launch so really don't uh, don't worry about it don't sweat it out um and that's it you guys so uh which molly cell 18650 was recommended i think it was the the p26a right i, I think so but uh what i'll do guys uh I'll, I'll get mooch's recommendations for the cells i'll get mooch's recommendations on where to buy the cells and they will all be with the replay of this show right here on tasterjuice.com so that's going to be the end of the show uh, thank you guys all for joining. Uh, sorry about the issues at the end, but don't worry. Don't worry. We're going to have Mooch back, okay? So, everybody, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Oh.